The Darth Retro Podcast is brought to you by the letter uh, T. Uh, T, the letter. Okay, so I don't get good sponsors these days. Who doesn't? Ha ha. The Darth Retro Podcast is a free-flowing conversation that occasionally touches on intelligent subjects, but mostly just sports, music, and life. And now, here is your adorable host, Tom Wagner. Welcome to the Darth Retro Podcast. This is like uh, the fourth episode of of this podcast. And it's currently kind of a uh, mostly, mostly sunny day on a Thursday Kind of, kind of chilly, chilly Thursday, August afternoon here in the old Fargo, North Dakota. All right. Uh, the first off, I'm going to be talking about some topics of. Going to be talking a little bit about some uh, Liverpool football from across the pond in uh, merry old England, and next topic is going to be also related to uh, soccer slash football and basically the life of an American soccer fan and um, basically talking about um, the whole topic of uh, women or at least general topics of about women there's <laughs> when, it, when it comes to women there's 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 nothing quite quite like the topic of that. So, um, let's uh, get started or so. So, onwards and onward. Well, I believe I mentioned pretty much in the first episode of the podcast that I have been a pretty staunch uh, Liverpool Reds fan. And basically, for basically a number of reasons why I've become a fan of them instead of Manchester United or Chelsea or Arsenal. Um, basically, my my love for Liverpool football basically goes more deeper than basically kind of a sport kind of thing. Um, basically, my most favorite band of all time is the Beatles, and they were pretty much uh, they pretty much grew up in Liverpool, so. Um, that's pretty much another reason why, um, I kind of have to cheer for, you know, Liverpool since, uh, the Fab Four, the Beatles basically come out, came out of, from Liverpool, England when they were in their height, were in their height of their fame in the 60s and such. Um, another reason why is... Basically, the owner of the Red Sox, um, John Henry and his associates, also own uh, the Liverpool Reds as well. So um, that's basically the other reason why I actually also loved uh, uh, Liverpool football. So, so you know, it's. You know, I think most most people are Manchester United fans, basically because of basically the mystique that they've had over the last twenty years. Um, 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 Ferguson, Ferguson's definitely one of the best managers, and and easily the last thirty or uh, thirty thirty odd years. That he's been at the helm of Manchester United since 1986, and you know I have ultimate respect for um, uh, Ferguson. So you know, it's, you know, I, I I have to hate Manchester United because you know they're ba basically your biggest rival. Um, even though I would say Everton is basically our biggest rival. Based on the fact that Everton's basically our cross down rival, and basically there's no, nothing quite like rivalry between Liverpool and 
Manchester United basically the easily the best um, football clubs in England and perhaps around the world. Um, but you know, looking looking into this season, basically this is this next season is basically the second season that I have been into Liverpool football, Liverpool football, football. Um, you know, it's, did I, did I think that management made the right decision in dumping um, uh, Kenny Dalglish? Um, you know, I I appreciated the guy what he did for the whole um, club, but you know, you you certainly have to have. Um, a certain degree of expectations when gaining the managerial spot for Liverpool. I mean, you basically have uh, Bill Shankly, and you you basically have to live up to basically his billing in that you have to you know you have to compete very well in the pre Premier League. You have to get doubles in. Premier League titles, or um, UEFA Championships, or FA Cups, but you know it's and he, other than the Carling Cup, which is not necessarily that big of a trophy over in England, but it's you know it's something, and unfortunately the expectations were. Um, not met for Kenny, King Kenny, and basically that's why management kind of basically gave him the sacking or the firing, as um, people in England would call it, um, sacking. But you know, um, looking into the season right now, um, I'm basically doing this podcast a little bit early before. Um, uh, Liverpool starts their um, English Premier League, Barclays Premier League um, season. Uh, they their first game is basically against West Bromwich, and that's on Saturday, I believe, the 18th of August. And then basically it gets kind of interesting from there. And I mean, they've been doing um, UEFA Europa League um, action earlier this month with FC Gomal. I, I hope I hope I'm spelling that right. But um, then they had a friendly against Leverkusen, and basically yeah, they have two other matchups against Hearts in the UEFA Europa League, and then. On the 26th is basically the uh, game against the current defending English Premier League champions uh, title holders, uh, Manchester City. And basically, from until from until then, basically our schedule is pretty 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 tight. Uh, on September 2nd, we are at home against Arsenal, and seven. And the 15th, uh, it's uh, Sunderland, and then the 23rd against Man United, and then 29th against Norwich, which I believe they were relegated um, earlier in the season. And for those in America who don't know about what regulation regulation means, it's basically if you have two of the worst teams basically going down going down a league and the two best teams in one league goes up to the Premier League and I don't know it's like actually kind of a good system to me but it's but I don't, I don't think it's I don't think in America it should be possible to have have regular regulation but um, October is basically kind of an easy month. We have Stoke City 
uh, Reading and Everton. Ever Everton probably might scare me a little bit, but you know I'm not too worried about it. Um, but in terms of our overall projection of of our season, you know, I don't think we're gonna win the title or anything. I think it's become more. Uh, I believe there's more more teams at stake for the title. Um, you know, I think Chelsea Chelsea is definitely quite of a choice choice to make. Of course, there's always Man Manchester United. He, they're always they're always looking to get another title. And then you have Manchester City who you know, they I mean, they're basically the defending champs in in the Premier League and, you know, you you, you can't help but expect that they can win another title in their history. And then you know, I think when when Arsenal got rid of uh, Villa Boas, or no, I actually made that might have been Chelsea, but when uh, Arsenal got rid of their manager, I think they basically kind of went on a, quite a bit of a run as well. But I could be wrong. Um, of course, I could be saying about that about Chelsea, who won the UEFA Cup against Bayern Munich, and quite the most biggest upset. Um, that I've seen in a soccer football game. Basically, you have Bayern Munich basically playing in their home stadium uh, against against Chelsea, who was basically a big underdog, and they somehow beat Bayern Munich for um, I think it was like their second UEFA Cup title. Actually, it's actually pretty cool. So, you know, basically, when I became a Manchester or Liverpool, Liverpool fan, uh, it was towards the towards the end of um, of um, the 2010-2011 season, and that was basically when um, they uh, dealt um, uh, Fernando Torres. Who plays now for Chelsea, but um, you know, was I was I happy for Fernando Torres to get a UEFA Cup title? Um, sure, why not? I I actually prefer to cheer on for any kind of um, English Premier League team other than Manchester United. I mean, if Arsenal was playing, I'd probably cheer for them, or Chelsea, I'd probably cheer for them as well. Uh, of course, Liverpool, um, Man Man City, I suppose. But you know, it's it's kind of interesting. Um, so basically, if if uh, Rogers can basically shore up our our um, offense, because basically our defense did most of the work in those ties and one goal games. But um, you know, Gerard's gonna be there. Of course, um, you have Suarez who basically signed a big deal uh, a couple of weeks ago, and then you have Skirtle, uh, Lucas, um, Agar, and Carroll, who are basically the basically the top guys of the top guys in our team. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other ones, but um, uh, of course you have Reyna, who who basically didn't have that great of a season. Uh, to me, I didn't I didn't think he had that great of a season uh, last year, but you know it was better than most. But um, so yeah. It's. I think we're probably expected to be at least about five, unless I, unless there has been some big improvement, or somehow that basically the top teams, other than Liverpool, basically get uh, worse 
Um, so basically, it's going to be basically a big, big miracle if uh, the Reds can win a title. Um, all right, uh, on to uh, the next uh, topic. Well, basically, coming on from the um, previous topic, um, basically that kind of relates to. Uh, what I was talking about in the last topic was uh, basically the life of an um, American soccer fan. Um, basically, just basically, I feel that MLS is basically basically a crappy league when it comes to um, to some of the big big boys like um, the Serie A of Italy, uh, English Premier League in England. Or uh, Las Liga in uh, Spain. Of course, I probably could probably said said that league wrong, but um, you know, it's basically coming coming from basically a soccer fan. You basically who basically cheers on for other other teams in basically another continent. Uh, you basically don't get to see them that much. So you basically really have to cherish every moment that you see see them on American TV like ESPN or um, sometimes Fox. Sometimes Fox has a soccer game that they show um, as like, um, especially during the football season when Fox has the Either the early early NFL game or the later football or the later NFL game. Um, you know, do I wish that that American networks would put on um, more football games or soccer games? Um, sure. Would I actually prefer? I, I prefer because I actually do like to watch soccer. Um, quite a bit, but you know it's 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 not that easy to like find. You you basically have to go on the internet, look at your team's website, and basically uh, make a determination of how well they did. If they won, then yay yay for you, or they tied. Which is kind of one of the more bigger differences between soccer and American football is that basically people have different opinions on what ties are. And uh, if there's like a tie in the NFL game, basically everyone's like, "Well, you know, you you didn't win, you didn't win the game, but you you didn't lose either." But so it's kind of like. Well, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not happy with you, but we're not mad at you for, for not uh, winning the game. But you know, a win is a win, and you basically have to cherish that as well. You know, basically, people. Basically, one of the reasons why soccer is perhaps boring to them is that they don't uh, show commercials during the game. I mean, they show commercials before, um, before and after, being before and after the game, and and during halftime. But it's you know, it's you you basically have to basically prepare yourself for that, and and I certainly I certainly prepared myself for that as well. But it's um, basically breaking down some of the myths of um, soccer that's boring. Well, it's only boring to you because there's like no commercials and basically they have guys just passing the ball around each other and such. But you know, people people also find baseball boring. You know, it's. So I say to them, why, why, why is it boring? It's just because you don't have that much of a attention span, 
doesn't mean that a sport is a, is is, is uh, boring. But so so another myth that uh, people have of soccer slash football is that um, oh well the U.S. U.S. men's team doesn't do that good, so we don't we we don't have that much popularity in that. And well, I believe that's I believe that's true, but. But you have the women, U.S. women's team, who basically won uh, gold in this previous Olympics in uh, London. And do you think people find that um, noteworthy? You know, no. Um, you know, basically, I think it's a great achievement by the U.S. women's team. Um, you know, you basically have the U.S., uh, Japan, uh, France, Canada, who basically were our biggest opponent opponents in in uh, women's soccer, and uh, basically the men's men's soccer is basically a lot more tougher when you have um, powerhouses like Brazil, uh, Germany, or England, or or Spain. It's a lot more tougher to to um, um, win uh, win gold or win the World Cup and in men's soccer, basically because that there's so much so much better teams out there. And you know, I I, I can actually understand I can understand that with how people uh, are getting that from, but. Just because the team's not that good doesn't mean you can't watch it. It's, what happened to patriotism? Like, go USA, USA, USA. But, um, another myth that, another myth about, about soccer football is that the games take too long. And, well, uh, let let me ask let me ask you this. Basically, a basically a soccer game, in most cases, is about ninety minutes long. And if you take that, take that plus the halftime, which is usually about ten to fifteen minutes, it's basically, basically you basically have about um, ninety to. 90 to 110 minutes of of um, playtime, and and that's basically about almost two hours. So so why why do you believe that soccer's soccer takes too long when when you basically have baseball games that can last for about three to four hours and football games plus commercials take about three hours to complete. Or such more, but so you know. Once again, if if you have a short attention span, then soccer is not for you. But I I I love I love soccer. It's it's certainly one of more one of the more fun sports around around the world. It's basically the world sport for a reason. Basically everyone watches it. I I guess other than the US but but you know, um sucks for us because it's actually really, really exciting to see so much um see so much fandom around around the world. You have uh English hooligans, you have Brazilian hooligans, and then you have um, some other countries like German German hooligans, and um, another myth is that um, soccer you know, soccer games have um, the instrument called the vuvuzela played at all all the games, and I haven't heard a vuvuzela played since World Cup and uh, a couple years ago 
uh, back in uh, South Africa. And um, I haven't I haven't heard that much of Vuvuzelas since that time. And annoying as it sounds, I I, d I have to do agree that it is actually pretty annoying to hear uh, Vuvuzela being played. Um, so in terms of like having more football games, I wish Fox would have Fox Soccer up as included in their free package for like um because you have basically you basically have the local Fox Sports affiliate like FSN North or FSN South or Midwest but I, I, I guess they do show I guess they do show soccer games from time to time and I do know that ESPN too um covers uh, soccer games as well uh, but that's only like once in a while so um, you know if um, actually um, in terms of this topic I'm I guess I'm pretty much done talking about it um, so uh, let's uh, get to the next topic onwards all right. Uh, the last uh, topic that I'll be talking about is uh, um, the quite a bit of the topic of um, women. Um, and there's basically so many other um, ways I could probably talk about this topic, but uh, first off, um, there's been actually quite a bit of uh, talk around the U.S. about. Um, U.S. women's um, reproductive rights and whether if it's a woman's decision or not to um, get an abortion and you know I believe that women should have the right to choose because basically it's really all about a woman it's really pretty much a women's issue it's you know, basically us us guys, males, um, the, we, we really don't have that much of a say when it comes to that, but um, basically one of the reasons why is that, um, I believe this, is that um, we don't go around nine months, nine months of our lives basically carrying, carrying a baby and Basically, we don't know what's, what that's really like, and we don't know what's that really what that really feels like trying to give birth. Um, certainly, I don't know what that's like to um, carry around a baby like that. But um, so you really have to um, give the woman a little bit more um, choice in deciding if if um, she should have the baby or not um, you know I think there should be some some limitations to it I mean if you're trying to get a baby just to be on teen mom uh, teen mom on uh, MTV then you know I think I think basically you should basically be barred um, from doing that, but um, I'm not sure if that makes sense or not, but um, certainly I think where the line should be crossed is basically um, basically from that reason. Uh, but, you know, I think women should have the choice to decide whether if they should have the baby or not. But, um, but you won't you won't hear hear me talk a little bit more about such topics like that as abortion because you know it's a woman's issue and us guys don't really have that much that much say in it and that's that's just my opinion on it um 
Well, I guess another another reason why I guess I am discussing this topic is that um, I'm single, and at least for this moment uh, in time, you know, um, I'm I'm not really I'm not really that much of a hurry to uh, get hitched with a girlfriend and such. Basically, the reason is that. I I actually enjoy being single, you know. It's it's definitely quite the life that I actually do enjoy. I mean, I have a little bit more freedom in what to do, uh, a little bit more freedom what to do, uh, a lot more choice in what I, how I should go about my day, how I should spend my money, uh, my time, you know. You know it's. It gives me a little bit more freedom, but you know it does have its drawbacks. I mean, us humans want to be loved and have the feeling of love and giving someone back our love, but you know, it's do do I think about it a lot? Of course I do. I mean, love is one of the best feelings on the earth. There's there's nothing quite like it, and I'm not I'm not that I'm not desperate to try to get a girlfriend. I mean, I tried I tried that once back when I was a freshman in college, and trust me, trust me, it doesn't not not work at all. And basically, I the whole desperation of it was. I, I I grew I grew more out of myself each time and day when I tried so desperately to try and find someone and I don't know basically my life was um, quite a bit of turmoil so um so basically I really just stopped. Um, really caring that much about trying to get a girlfriend and just let let life come to you and such so and it really made me a lot more happier of, of a person you know I'm sure I'm sure eventually someone find, will find me and basically find find love you know, find a person, you know. But you know, people basically ask me why why haven't you gotten a girlfriend? It's just it's like shut up. I'm just trying to enjoy life. I'm I actually love being single. It's 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 one of the fun finer points in life. But if if someone does come, well I I'll cherish basically being with that person basically every single second because there's nothing quite like it and it's certainly better off being sad and lonely and heartbroken and um, I guess the other reason why I guess um, what's my choices in women I um, um what do I what do I like about women? Um, basically, to me, if you have a smile, a really really great smile, uh, I I basically go 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 gaga all over. Basically, makes me think about basically that mental image basically all the time, and um, I'm I'm a real sucker for uh, blue eyes, other than the fact that I am also blue-eyed, um, I don't know. I guess, I guess green eyes, green eyes, brown eyes are pretty cute too on on a girl. But um, um, if if she's actually kind of a nerd, uh, I actually kind of <laughs> actually that's kind of actually more of a um, favorite of mine. But um, if if a girl is basically like 
trying to be something that she's not, then that's that's such 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 a turn off. Such a turn off for me. Just just be yourself, you know. It's, just let your sign and let yourself shine out. You know, that's basically what every any guy wants in a girl, and basically the same it's the same thing for girls as well. But you know, um, do I find shy girls um, attractive? Well, sure, sure, I suppose. Um, you know, I think if if she's uh, shy with me for basically the most longest time ever, then, you know, it's, you know, it's not, it's going to be a problem, but, um, you know, a little, a little, um, a little shy is, a little shy doesn't hurt anyone, but, um, what else do I like in girls? Um, um, in terms of hair, um, uh, I like I like both best of both worlds, uh, blondes and brunettes. But I do like brunettes a little bit better. But um, you know, if if you're blonde, I I'm sure I'll, I'll like you anyway as well, but, um, um, uh, some other things, um, in terms of, um, weight, um, you, you have to be at least attractive, you know, you, you don't have to be a supermodel to, um, to be with me, but, you know, if, you know, I like I like meat. You have to have some meat in those bones. I I can't stand um, um, girls that basically look like skeletons, and it's just just not healthy healthy to me. Um, in terms of um, boobs, or <laughs> wow, if only my mother could see, he could hear me now. Uh, in terms of um, cleavage, I, I I could care less about cleavage. Uh, I'm I'm more of a I'm more of a legs legs kind of guy. I mean, smooth legs, smooth legs. Oh man, smooth legs. I I almost dream of the thought of like feeling a feeling a girl's um, smooth legs, but. Um, I, man, I feel so awkward just talking about this. <laughs> um, um, do do I have someone in mind? You know, yeah. I mean, basically any guy who basically ha who basically says that there is no one um, that he's thinking about in his life, then he is basically a liar. I mean. You know, yes, I do have someone that I'm thinking about basically all the time, but, you know, does that mean that she thinks of me all the time? But, you know, um, not not always, I, I don't think. I mean, basically what, what girls and guys think is basically totally different things, and um not sure if that makes sense or not, but... Um, you know, I could probably talk so much more about this kind of person, but, um, I'll, <laughs> I feel so awkward just talking about this topic, but why, I don't usually talk about girls all that much, it's, and I'm single, so I don't really talk about them as much as probably some of them talk about me. But, um, you know, if you want to talk about it, I'm more certainly up to discuss about it, but it's just not on this podcast. That's, that's kind of my, um, my, um, 
rule, I suppose. But, um, but in terms of that, I'm not really going to talk about more about it. Um, anyway, um, I guess that's pretty much it. I do have a little bit some something to talk about as well. So let's uh, talk about that. Uh, so, um, you know, back when I was a DJ for KMSC Dragon Radio, um, I used to do uh, a little segment called Weird News for the Week. And basically I think about putting this um, as a segment onto the show itself. And basically for uh, this week's topic is, uh, Weird News topic is um, uh, basically Olympics theme. And it talks about how Ryan Lochte has uh, a little problem when he when he swims, and basically quotes as saying, "Sometimes you just gotta go," <laughs> and um, you you can't get much more weirder than having someone as an Olympian as Ryan Lochte peeing in the pool uh, in front of national television. Um, basically, uh, just basically talks about how, um, uh, basically how it is the most expensive toilet, and it's, it's basically all his, it's such, such an odd story, uh, to, it's basically kind of one of the more funny stories that you'll ever hear. Um, in the Olympics coverage, uh, but if you want to know more um, about this uh, story, uh, just um, Google uh, Lock T Pin and Pool, and chances are you'll probably see um, uh, basically something live from NBC.com or for the Olympics, and. I don't know, I'll probably talk a little bit more uh, next week for the topic, but um, I'm thinking I'm getting towards my uh, time limit, um, my self-imposed time limit. Um, so, um, hey, well, believe we'll probably see you all next uh, week. Um, if you have comments, questions, or concerns, uh, feel free to email me at uh, Tom Music Fan 19 at gmail.com, or you can always uh, put a comment on my YouTube videos as well. Um, so we'll see you all um, uh, next week and sometime for uh, next episode 5. So uh, peace out.